Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So this is part three of three in the series around the Boss Elite head unit that we actually installed into Dana's Subaru Forester. And I tell you, uh, we are back home in Ohio. We were on an eight day, 2400 mile trip. And as much as the trip was a very long one, it was great to be able to spend the holidays with family. Very fortunate and blessed to be able to do that. I wish that I had the opportunity to be able to test every new head unit, just like we were able to do this one as soon as we installed it. I think it would end up saving me a lot of headaches and deciding later down the road that something I just didn't really particularly care for or I was absolutely in love with it because I was able to put it through the paces. But after this particular trip, we were really able to narrow down what we liked, what we disliked, and come to an overall decision on whether we're going to keep it installed. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'll walk you through some of the features that were a part of it and uh, the good and the bad that we discovered on this road trip. And of course, are we keeping it installed? Let's do it. All right, let's start with the startup here. The glare is terrible no matter which way that I go. So you'll see the camera in there. Apologies on that. The glare and the reflection. All right, home screen. So here, very basic, very simple. You have a couple of different themes that you can choose from, mainly just colors. There are no fancy graphics, uh, no 3D stuff on this particular uh, head unit. From here, in regards to the good, we'll talk about the first, which is the video quality. I showed a real short clip in the installation video of a movie plane and I think the video quality is very comparable to the Kenwood and Pioneer that I have in the other cars. So that was fine. So the sound improvement over OEM was huge. You definitely could hear more clarity at the different levels of sound uh, from a bass, from a mid bass, and a treble. So I was very happy with that. The wiring harness in the install is also another good part of the head unit. Ease of install, I can't, can't say enough about that. It was incredibly easy. The EQ that you have here is basically an 8-band EQ. You have a number of different settings from classic, rock, pop, jazz electric and then you have a couple of different user personalized settings that you can go in when messing with this on the road and I, I listen to various types of music whether it's bluegrass or jazz or EDM I didn't really see a whole lot of difference between some of the other settings so I had to really make a custom one to bring out the most in the music uh, Dana doesn't listen to music very loud, so it was really just focused on clarity for this one. Another good is the Bluetooth connectivity. Never had any problems with it dropping the connection compared to some other head units. We go into the phone here. You go into device. Now we have currently both our phones on this. However, the one bad that's connected to this is that you can only have one phone connected at a time. So, for instance, Dana's phone is currently connected to it. Although mine is there, I'd have to go in here. If I want hers connected to it, I have to click connect. If I want to hook up mine to it and hers is connected, I'd click disconnect. And then go into mine and then click connect. So that is one downside that it's only one phone at a time that can be connected compared to my Kenwood that I can have two different phones connected at one time. All right, that is the short list of good. So let's talk about the bad. 
on the bat first one microphone this little bitty hole right here there is no external mic for this head unit and without that external mic the one phone call we attempted was really subpar uh, subpar to so much that the person on the other line really couldn't make out anything I was saying so I had to disconnect the Bluetooth and just talk on the phone regularly definitely a bad let's go into the next bad is the GPS so the GPS here has very limited functions in regards to what you're looking at on the road you have a zoom out button but only so far if you're wanting to look further ahead in your route you can't pinch a screen or move it very much you can slide but if you're on a curvy road it goes this way and then up then you're sliding then you take your finger off and you're sliding that way and then you're going this way it takes a while when you are in route driving for it to move so that was not good the GPS also locked up several times while on the road in route traveling another strike against it the third one is that it would periodically have us take an exit ramp off the interstate and literally want us to cross the street and get on the on-ramp to go back to the same interstate we were on it did that multiple times so ultimately we decided just to not even use this GPS uh, it did not give us a variety of different routes for us to go in you could go through settings and change a few things to then get a different route but you couldn't have a choice there on the screen to pick and a lot of times it was different than what Google was actually showing us next piece is if we're in navigation and we want to go to another function on here like the radio there's no easy way to go straight back to the home screen you have to do mode there's no USB so once I click OK then it'll take me back to the home screen but if there was a USB it would start playing music and then I would have to do mode again and then it would go to radio and I would have to do mode again and it would have to go to streaming so there's no easy way to go directly to the home screen big big issue when you're on a long road trip and you're wanting to jump back and forth between things also with the tuner and the radio I could not get it to pick up any stations uh, I used both the OEM antenna wire as well as the new one that came in the kit and neither of them actually allowed pickup of the radio stations and there was nothing missing in the wiring harness that could have actually allowed it to start working so I don't know what the issue is with that one more bad is that the theme that you have on your home screen the different colors and the couple little lines they don't travel to any other screens you basically go from that to a black screen plain nothing else to it I would have liked for the colors, the lines, to maybe travel to each screen, but it doesn't. All right, so there you have it. The good and the bad of the head unit. Final verdict is unfortunately we are sending this back to Crutchfield. Thankfully, they are fantastic with their service, quickly gave me an RMA, uh, did not ask questions outside of a what exactly caused the issue so they can input it into the notes for it but uh, they definitely understand the reasoning behind it and the the inability of some of the major functions working and working correctly now I don't know whether that's just for this particular head unit or whether it's a manufacturing issue across all of these there's no way to find out but we're going to continue on the search for the right head unit for Dana and her Forester. Uh, the good thing about going through this exercise is that we were able to really identify some of the things that she loves with 
without having to ever know that before and some features that she doesn't really like and doesn't really need so this is a good exercise overall a little bit of work we'll put the oem head unit back in for now it'll be a very quick exchange and we'll get back to the search of trying to find the ideal head unit for her and her car so hopefully this episode was some value of you if you're looking at this particular head unit uh, or you've already bought it and maybe you had the same issues or didn't have the same issues. But either way, if you have comments, questions, uh, any type of feedback, certainly feel free to drop those in the comments. I'd love to be able to go ahead and answer those uh, and hear about your experiences. But outside of that, thanks once again for joining us for another episode. We certainly appreciate you spending your time with us. Until next episode, take care, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye.